John chapter number 4. My message today is called Activating Miracles by Worship. Activating Miracles by Worship. Now, the other day I preached this message by default in morning prayer. But what it did is it led us into an unusual place of worship. And we ended up in a deep place of worship. And it was awesome. And I believe that the whole church needs this message. So I'm going to go deeper in that message. Please also make available that, that 30 minute, 40 minute message I did in morning prayer on worship. It was powerful. Powerful. I didn't have any notes or anything like that. The Holy Ghost just said, no, teach them worship. And it began to un, un, download some things to me that I shared and also just remind me of things that he has deposited in me concerning worship. And I want you to catch this message. If you catch this message, you will never stand outside again during praise and worship like some people do. Hallelujah. So you're going to understand how to activate the miraculous through worship. Praise God. Are you in John chapter number 4? The Bible says in verse number 23, but the hour is coming and now is. Somebody say it now is. Say it's time. All right. He says, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, the hour is coming and now is when the, tr when the true worshipers, say true worshipers. All right. So there are worshipers and there are true worshipers. All right. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Somebody say, God is looking for such worshipers. Say, God is looking for such worshipers. Then He says in verse 24, God is spirit. And those who worship Him must, not might, must worship in spirit and in truth. Lift up your right hand. Father, help me today. Speak through me. Let my tongue be as a pen of a ready writer. Inscribing the precepts of God upon the hearts of men. Hide my flesh behind the cross. Let there be none of me and all of you. And Father, I need you to use me today. I need your children to understand understand your word let there be no confusion about the things that i'm sharing bring clarity of thoughts to the mind of your children give me nimbleness of thought father touch my tongue lord god use me like never before bring understanding to the simple give me the tongue of the learned oh god today let me speak things that are beyond me Lord, even as I'm speaking this word, Lord God, you're welcome to bring fresh revelation. Bring more and more revelation. Bring more and more wisdom my way. Let me operate with the wisdom of Daniel. Not only the wisdom of Daniel, but the wisdom of the gods. Let this wisdom be my portion, oh Father. Use me like never before. Anoint the ears of the hearers. Let them not hear a man. Let them hear you. Even if they never remember my name, oh God, let them remember that it is you who is speaking to them. Speak to your children, Father. They are ready to hear. Speak to them. They are ready to listen. Oh Lord, we are open for a move of God. We are open for divine assistance. Help them, Father, and speak today. We are ready. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? that the grass withers and the flower fades but your word is eternal. Breaking the chains Unlocking your destiny Let's dissect this scripture. Let's go back there to the book of John chapter number 4. I want you to gain understanding. My, my job and, and my desire is not to be heard but to be understood when I'm teaching the word of God. So if you gain understanding, the Bible says good understanding gains favor. And I believe that by this divine understanding you will gain the favor of God. Hallelujah. 
In the book of John chapter number 4, we read here, but the hour, verse 23, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers, say true worshippers, talk to me, say true worshippers. To, to, from today, I want you to move from being a worshipper to a true worshipper. When he talks about worshippers, he's not talking about the choir. So notice he did not say the hour cometh and now is when the choir will sing. No, he says when the true worshippers. You don't need a beautiful voice to worship. I know my voice is very ugly. M me, personally, I've got an ugly voice when I'm singing. I know. And I know I sing out of tune. Don't try and come and teach me to how to get into tune. It's not about tune. It's about tuning into the heart of God. I am a katamahaya. I cannot sing like Donnie McClake. It doesn't matter. What matters to God is not a good tune. What matters to God is a heart that is hungry for him. And you say, I yearn for him. Oh, Mazatamahaya. I lift up my hands and I lift up my heart to him. Even if I don't have the right tune, even if I don't have the right lyrics. Oh, God, even if I don't know the, the, the lyrics to the song, I can compose my own song. I can sing a new song unto you, oh, Lord. Because, God, you are my everything. God is looking for such a worshiper he's looking for a deep worshiper worshiping him from the depth of your heart personally i don't understand people who during praise and worship they are looking around what are you looking for you are looking around seeing who people are what are they wearing where they are coming from where are they going no that's not your job during praise and worship your job is to connect to the heart of god that's what worship does worship connects me to the heartbeat of god i wish i had somebody who came to church i wish i wish i had somebody who's hungry for this message who's who's hungry to get in touch with god worship touches his heart did you get that it touches God's heart. And he says then in, in verse 24, God is spirit. Someone say spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. What is he saying? There are those who worship in the flesh. God is looking for people who, 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 worship, who, who birth songs out of prayer. Who birth songs out of spending time in his holy presence. And when they sing the songs, they don't only touch the heart of God. They touch the hearts of people and connect people to God. That is a true worshiper. Are you understanding me? That is a true, genuine, authentic worshiper. Somebody who worships God out of their own experiences with God. Personal experiences. That you said some things to God. If it had not been for you, that was on my side. Oh, the enemy wanted to take me out here. The enemy threatened my life over there. The enemy, I almost lost all my money on that contract and that deal. But Lord, 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 you are so awesome. You are so glorious. You are so wonderful. You are near. You're not even speaking things that you heard someone say. But you are speaking from the heart. You are worshipping him in spirit in spirit then he says in truth and i said lord what do you mean in truth he says i want you to say things you mean things you mean so you, you, you know you can just sing a song that you don't mean and as long as you are singing it and not meaning it it doesn't touch the heart of god when you touch the heart of god god comes down and he moves on your behalf hallelujah hallelujah the lord was speaking to me and he said to me he said son when, 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 when you worship me, your worship comes up to heaven as a sweet smelling savor unto God. How many have read that in the Bible? And he says, when it comes up as a sweet smelling savor, I, God, I inhale worship. And he says, I exhale blessings. And he said, as long as, as long as you are short of worship, you'll be short of blessings. Because when he inhales your worship, it comes up to him as a sweet smelling savor. He exhales big breakthroughs. And so we have not seen 
breakthroughs or miracles on the dimension that we are supposed to see them because though you have been worshipping, you have not been a true worshipper. You have not been a true worshipper. You have been a distracted worshipper. Worship is deeper than prayer. Worship is intimacy with God. Oh, please write that down. Write that down. Worship is intimacy with God. What does intimacy mean? Intimacy means into me see. Into me see. So when I'm intimate with God, he shows me things that others cannot see. When you are intimate, even with your partner, when you are intimate with your partner, there are dimensions of your partner that you see that everyone else cannot see. When you are intimate, that is the time when many secrets are revealed. So how can we tap into the secrets of Jehovah when we are not intimate with God? Your, 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 your relationship with God is on a friendship basis at best. No intimacy. And the Lord said to me, I think it was on Friday, he said, son, tell them that, you see, they've, I've had a problem with them in that some of them, they say they have a relationship with me, but it's not a love relationship. It's just friendship at best. Listen to me. I want you to graduate from just having a friendship with God to having intimacy with God. Worship is intimate. That's why in worship you can cry tears of passion. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you. From the depth of my heart, I love you. Lord, even if you never did one more thing for me, you have done enough. Even if you never blessed me again, you have blessed me enough. Enough. You took me out of the mighty clay. You took me out of poverty, oh Lord. You landed me, up, me upon a rock. And now you have established me, oh God. For people to sit and listen to me, oh Lord. Oh Lord, who am I? I am not even worthy. But you, oh God, found me worthy to give a microphone and to be called a man of God. People cannot even mention my title without mentioning you. They call me a man of God. Oh God, I am just but a person from Jewish. I'm just but a sinner, oh Lord. Oh, and you begin to look at yourself. You begin to look at how bad you are in comparison to how good he is to you. And all you can do is lift up your hands in holy abandonment and say, oh God, you are worthy. <laughs> You are worthy, you are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy. What is man that you are so mindful of him? And the son of man that you visited him, oh Lord. You visit me every day. In my shower you visit me. In my sleep you visit me, oh Lord. How can I not but worship you? Oh, even if I put that aside and I just begin to look at you, oh Lord. And look at how wonderful you are. How awesome you are. How glorious you are. Oh Lord. Lord, you are full of glory, majesty. In you I live, in you I move, in you I have my being. You're not singing a song because worship is not a song. Worship is not a song. Listen to me. Worship is not a song. It is my expression of love to my God. That's not a song. It is my expression. They sing songs out of worship and call them worship songs. But worship is not a song somebody would hear man of God I understood this scripture from another dimension Daniel eleven thirty two. he says they that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits now I've taught this scripture for many years from the from the perspective of knowledge that when I know more about my God I will do great exploits but this morning the Lord downloaded a fresh revelation to me he says when I'm saying no I'm talking about intimacy and Adam knew if, and they birthed, uh, 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 are you understanding me? And they birthed the son out of that. So he says, when you know me on that dimension, it is me getting into you. Oh, Lama Zika Labahaya. When you allow me to come in, that is intimacy, and that's when things can be birthed. That's when you can do exploits. Look at all the men and women in the Bible that did great exploits. They had a special relationship with God. 
God is saying, I want to know you on another dimension. He's saying, I want to spend time with you. Because what kind of a lover are you that does not spend time? If there's anything women cry for, it's time. Spend time with me. And don't just spend time with me. Spend quality time with me. Worship is spending quality time with God. It has always been about you, Lord. This whole thing has always been about you. Church has always been about you. My life has always been about you. And besides, in you I live. In you I move. In you I have my being. Oh God, oh Lord, you are my everything. You are my all. Some trust in chariots, some in trust in horses. But I trust in you, Lord. I trust you. Oh Lord, I trust you even when I can't trace you. That's why Job out of Revelation, when he was in trouble, he said, For oh, he slay me. Yet shall I trust him. That was a statement of worship. He was saying, I will not allow my troubles to shut down my worship. If you just came to church for that one statement, it's good enough. I will not allow my trouble to shut down my worship. Because when the devil sends trouble your way, he's trying to shut down your worship. He's trying to shut it down. He's trying to get you to, comp to, to join the group of Zimbabweans who are complainers and people who are just memorers. I refuse. No matter what I'm going through, I am still a worshiper. Not just a worshiper. I'm a worshiper who will worship in spirit. And in... When you make love to your spouse, are you distracted? Am I talking to somebody? Because you, as, a, as a woman, you are making love to your husband. It's not time for you to be on WhatsApp. <laughs> We are trying to do serious things here. And this is how God is feeling about some of you. He's, you're, you're, looking, you're looking at your Facebook during worship. So you're not a true worshiper. You're not a true worshiper. When I'm worshiping God, I'm, 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 I'm focusing on Him. What is to worship? To worship is to magnify God. To make him bigger in your own eyes. Hallelujah. Let, let me show you another scripture, Albert, that, that God showed me on another dimension. Put up there Psalm 35, 27. God said to me, your worship will kill the complaining spirit. I had this this morning. He said this to me this morning. I wrote it in my notebook. He said, your worship will kill the complaining spirit. Because worship makes you focus on the goodness of God, on the bigness of God, on the awesomeness of God. Hallelujah. It makes you focus on the abilities of God, on who God is. Are you understanding me? He says, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say what? Continually. What are they saying? Let the Lord be magnified. Huh? So these ones who are saying continually, let the Lord be. These are worshippers. Huh? And then what happens? Now, let them say, let, let, them, let them say, let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the what? Prosperity of his servants. So he says, if you magnify me, I will have pleasure in your prosperity. I, did, I never saw the worship there in that, in, the, in that scripture. For years, I've been teaching this scripture for almost 20 years. But I never saw that. This was a fresh download from God. He says you can get your prosperity by worship. He says I'll be excited about your prosperity. Hallelujah. You have worshipped for years with no results. Because your worship has been distracted at best. I don't need a choir to worship God. I don't even need a song to worship God. That kind of worship is called in Hebrew, Yada. 
where you just sing new songs unto the Lord where you become a song composer by yourself and you just begin to sing worship you just begin to exalt him you just begin to extol him you lift up your hands in abandonment and begin to tell him what 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 he means to you personally personally personal worship is personal and that's why when we worship him all of us correctly here his presence just comes down into the service because now you are now tapping into the power of corporate worship listen to me god said to me whatever you cannot get through prayer i'll give you through worship if you struggle to get results during prayer break into worship break into worship what is to worship joe to worship is to break on god <laughs> you are breaking on him you are breaking on his abilities god taught me something profound something really really profound he said to me you must break on me to your problem so in other words when i'm worshiping god I, i'm not just t telling him because I'm speaking out aloud, I also want my problem to hear it. So when I have no money in my pocket, watch this. I say, God, you are my provider. This way, right? So in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm magnifying him. This way. I'm telling him, you are a great provider. Hello? Then God looks at my empty wallet and he says, angels, this guy has said that we are the ones who provide for him. But look, he's got nothing right now. Can we go and correct the situation? Can we go and correct the situation? Are you understanding? In the same token, you can be sick, very, very sick. And you say, Lord, you are my healer. And God says, ah, angels, this guy is on a sick bed, but he's saying we are the healer. Imagine if he tells people that we are the ones responsible for his healing and he stays stuck in that bed. It means that we get a bad reputation as heaven. Hurry up, go and heal that man, go and heal that man, go and heal that man, go and heal. Are you understanding me? This is the power of worship. You magnify a dimension of God and God is now forced in a corner, so to speak, that forces him to address the situation that you have magnified. So, anything that you are struggling with, tell God you are that situation. When you are not at peace, you say, Lord, you are my peace. <laughs> you are my peace. Is, does the Bible not say that? He says, he's my peace. He says, when people are attacking you, you don't need to attack them back, he said. He said, all you need to say is, God, you are my shield. <laughs> You are my shield. So what am I doing? I'm worshipping my way into miracles. I'm worshipping my way into divine defense. So you see your trouble, they say, ah, no problem. You go and say, God. You've got a financial problem over there. You come to God. You say, God, you are my provider. You are my provider. Is your name not Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides? Oh, Lord, I thank you for you have provided for me in the past and I know you provide for me in the future. You are my provider, oh, Lord. Oh, Father, even beyond provision, you are El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Meanwhile, there's nothing in your pocket, but you are now worshiping God. What are you doing? You are confusing hell because hell has hit your finances. But you are saying, God, you are my provider. Hey, are we somebody understood the point that I'm trying to make here? You tell God, you are my provider. In other words, you are saying to him, God, as my provider, how can you allow this situation to be? You are not saying it, but you are saying it indirectly. Are you understanding? You are saying it in the midst of problems. Basically, what you are saying is, what is this small problem in the sight of God who is so big and so awesome. Uh, you begin to tell him silver is yours, oh Lord. Gold is yours. What is a, what is a US dollar before you, oh Lord? Silver is yours. Gold is yours. Uh, Lord God, the whole earth belongs to you. When people are difficult to you, you begin to say, Lord, you are so glorious and wonderful. You are so mighty, oh my Father. The hearts of kings are in your hand. And whenever you get ready to Lord, you can turn their hearts to towards me. Oh Lord, I know you can do it. I don't doubt your abilities. I don't doubt your capabilities, oh Lord. You are capable of all things. Did you not say in your word, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Then you look at your hard situation and you say, Father, there's nothing too hard for you. 
I'm teaching you something. I'm teaching you something. If you can get to that level in God, I'm telling you all your problems disappear. The Bible says that mountains, they, 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 they melt like wax in the presence of God. What does worship do? Worship activates the presence of God. So when the presence of God comes, all the mountains in my life, they have to melt. Goliath dies in the presence of God. You begin to look at your God and tell him, Lord, you are the mighty man of war. You fight my battles. Like David said, he says the battle belongs to God. That's what he said in that First Samuel 17. He was telling God and telling Goliath that this battle, I'm not even the one who will fight it. I'm just positioning myself. I know when my God gets ready to fight, he's going to fight here for me. I wish I had somebody who has a battle that you know, that you know, that you know, that you cannot do this thing. Nobody can do this but God. Nobody can fix this but God. So what do I do? I go ahead and magnify him. I go ahead and extol him. I go ahead and I lift up his name. I magnify his holy name. Oh Lord, who can be compared to you? You are incomparable. Oh God, I can't compare anyone to you. I have looked the whole world over and I have found that there is none like you. So I have to go ahead and magnify you. I have to go ahead and remind you, Lord, remind you of your CV. Remind you of your powerful CV, oh Lord. You have never lost a patient. You have never lost a battle. You have never lost an argument. Who can say no when you say yes? In other words, you are telling him that. And then you are looking at your boss situation. Who is saying no about a certain situation? And you say, God, who can say no? When you have said yes, when I was in prayer, you said yes, this contract is mine. You said yes, this deal is mine. Then you find somebody that manifests. Hey, almost one like you say, God, your God, who can say no? In other words, you are saying to God, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to say no to the situation that heaven has, tell, has stood up and already decided? That's why, Lord, I have no choice but to magnify you. I have no choice but to worship you. I have no choice but to worship you. You are my all. You are my everything. When mother and father forsook me, you are still there. And you are still there. When they told me we have disowned you, and I accepted because I knew that there was a God who sits up high, and he looks down low, and he says, I'm father to the fatherless oh come as that I'm not gonna run after relatives that despise me and hate me because I have a God I have a father who is up in heaven when he looks at me I'm the apple of his eye because I'm a worshiper because I'm a worshiper I'm telling you you can't beat a worshiper you can't beat a worshiper because a worshiper is a lover of God a worshiper is the apple of God's eye you you cannot touch the apple of God's eye and remain the same. That's why, church, I'm telling you, never fight a worshiper. Never fight a wor I didn't say a choir member. I said a worshiper. Ah, Oh, Lord. Hey, Mazata Mahaya. When you can worship him, when you can worship him, the Bible says in the book of Job chapter 1, put it up there. Yeah. Job chapter 1, verse number 19 and 20, somewhere there. This is the time when Job's children were killed by a whirlwind because the wind came and it blew the house and the, the pillars of the house fell and the house fell on the children of Job. And the Bible says Job tore his robe and worshipped God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Hawali in the midst of losing not one child but all of his children? Some of you, you cannot worship God because you lost your chickens. Job had lost his children. Some of you cannot worship God that week because you lost your car. Job lost his children. And in the midst of losing, I, do you know how much I love my children? I can imagine what would happen if I lost all my children. God forbid. But he lost all his children. And instead of saying, God, where are you? He said, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. His wife said, curse God and die. He says, you are a foolish woman. You are worthy to be praised. 
in the midst of all your losses you got to get to a place of desperate worship you got to get to a place of sacrificial worship he told me the other day sacrificial worship is worshiping God when you are in trouble when things are so bad but you are there in morning prayer lifting up the name of the Lord and you are saying father you are my everything you are my everything. I'm not even going to look at this situation. Because though this situation slay me, yet I will trust you. I will not complain to my only source of solution, who is you. You are my God. You are my Lord and my Savior. I remember the Canaanite woman in Matthew 15. She, she, Jesus called her a dog. And the Bible says she worshipped him. <laughs> she worshipped him. Why? She was trying to get a miracle from Jesus that she did not qualify for. So she understood that the only way for me to get this miracle is for me to worship God to worship God. I'm not even going to ask him for the answer. I'm not even going to ask him for the solution. All I'm going to do is tell him who he is. To tell him how marvelous he is. To tell him that there can be nobody compared to him. I have searched this whole world and I have found that there's nobody to be compared to him. Who can be compared to you? Oh God. You are marvelous God. Even when you're in trouble you tell him thank you Lord that God you are love. You are love, you are love. Your heart has just been broken, but you tell God, God, I thank you because you are love. Jesus, you're the lover of my soul. These are songs you must sing when you are rejected by men. You say it doesn't matter because Jesus is the lover of my soul. I remember the West African sang a powerful song. I'm sure somebody was in trouble, big trouble. And he says, I have a very big God, oh, always by my side. A very big God, oh, by my side, by my... I have a very big God, oh, and he's always by my... Very big God, oh, by my you change the situation you don't say God where are you why are you delaying how far what is this no you are in that situation you are in the middle of the storm by my side by my side very big God oh, by my side while they are bewitching you in November very big God oh, always by my very big God oh, by my you've just manifested in deliverance very big God oh. very big God oh. they are refusing with your money very big God oh. and he's always by my very big God oh. by my by my. before you know it the way you have magnified him the big God will come and Squash the small problem. Hey, I wish somebody could understand the words coming out of my mouth when you worship him and you tell him, God, you are so big. Oh, come on, We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Unlocking your destiny